Protesters have gathered for a third day at Victoria's State Parliament to voice their anger at the controversial proposed pandemic legislation. And this comes as the state records nine deaths with COVID and 996 new cases. Reporter Stephanie Ferrier has more from Melbourne just come out not a long time ago from the Department of Health and we now have 996 new cases of coronavirus so that is up by 199 on yesterday but still under the thousand mark which is a good sign. Uh, unfortunately and very sadly we've had another nine lives lost so that now takes the death toll relating to this latest Delta outbreak to 433 and we also currently have some 14,000 and 260 active cases across the state. But in terms of the hospitalisations, because they are the very important numbers that health authorities are keeping a very close eye on, we're seeing those numbers continuing to fall in terms of hospitalisations down to 357. That's far lower than our seven day average, uh, which is 402. At the moment, there are 58 active coronavirus cases that are in intensive care. Uh, there's another 65 that have been cleared in intensive care and unfortunately of those 35 of them remain on a ventilator. But just in terms of the vaccination rates, uh, the Department of Health has tweeted out saying that we're now at 87% of the 12 plus population. We do know that we're at about 93.5% first dose of the 16 plus and 88.2% of the second dose or fully vaccinated vaccinated of 16 uh, plus population here in Victoria. So that is great news. Uh, now debate over the government's controversial pandemic laws went well into the night. When's it expected to continue? Yes, yeah, so the debate is not actually going to resume until Thursday, but as you can see behind me at the moment, there is still a group of protesters that are continuing their vigil here on the steps of Parliament House. They've been here since Monday, and in fact, not long ago, they were moved down to the lower steps by the police officers and protective services officers here. Uh, they've got their blankets that they were huddling under and their camp uh, chairs as well that they stayed the night out here for. They're there was a lone trumpeter here earlier this morning, uh, but at least we haven't seen a repeat of those very menacing scenes that we saw on Monday night when there was a truck that had the gallows, life-size gallows on the back of it with a, a doll depicting Daniel Andrews as well that was being driven backwards and forwards out the front of Parliament. Now, we did hear uh, that uh, there were some concerns from protesters themselves that were down here saying that they had been disappointed that they were protesting against the laws and it appeared as if this had been infiltrated by some of those more extreme elements. And Kath Andrews, who is Daniel Andrews' wife, had actually tweeted uh, saying that uh, they'd received a lot of messages of support after what was obviously a very disturbing element of this protest. And uh, we are reminded that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. So as ever to stand with Dan and just this morning, we also heard from Daniel Andrews himself talking about how uh, this is not representative of the wider population of Victoria. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. I wouldn't want the, the appalling, the disgusting and the potentially criminal behaviour of a small number of people to detract away from the amazing job that so many Victorians have done. It is so unfair for a small, ugly mob to be taking attention away from the more than 90% of Victorians who have had a first dose and will soon have had a second dose. That's where our focus should be. Now, as you can see behind me at the moment, they're just installing these uh, barricades on that lower landing level of the steps to separate uh, the police officers and, and have another clear barricade for against those protesters at the moment. Uh, but despite all of the actions of the protests, this bill does look set to pass because it has uh, received the support of three key cross benches in the upper house. And uh, that is due to the fact that the government has made some significant amendments, uh, including halving the fine 
guidelines, as well as also in, uh, enforcing the fact that any public health orders upon which these new pandemic laws are based will actually be presented to Parliament and to the public within seven days, not 14, and also making sure that they really clarify the classification, uh, for example, saying that it is people who are unvaccinated who will be banned from certain sporting events in the future as well. And clearly there is still a lot of controversy in regards to these new laws. That is because it is moving the power to declare pandemic from the Chief Health Officer across to the Premier and and also the health minister as well. And we are expecting to see this pass through the upper house uh, at some stage later this week.